There just aren't a lot of good third-party options out there for Joy-Con. But Hori decided to not only put out a pair of their own, but basically cut an entire Pro Controller in half and slide it on the side of a Switch. And with that, you get, well, this. And this is, uh, interesting. Oh, wait, hold on. Sorry. There we go. What's up guys, thank you so much for stopping in today. Please do me a quick favor and leave a like on this video and if you are not, we are trying to reach 600 subscribers by the end of February and I know I sound like a broken record, I said that for about two months now, but we are on track and very, very close. So if you would, please leave a like, as I said, and make sure you subscribe. So I know, I'm late to the party on these things, I know. But the Split Pad Pro is something I've wanted to check out since we started seeing pictures pop up from E3 last year. These things are basically a Pro Controller cut right down the middle. And I've gotta admit, it's done pretty well, but it's also got its downside for sure. It really comes down to what you like to play and how you like to play, if these big old beastly things are gonna work for you or not. Okay, let's start out with the basics. Obviously, like I said before, this thing's pretty much laid out like a Pro Controller. On the right, you have the standard plus and home buttons, along with the A, B, X, Y buttons, the right joystick, and the two shoulder buttons. They have added on the bottom here a turbo button and an assign button. There is a programmable button on the back. You use the assign button to, well, assign a button to that programmable button on the back. I will say I really do enjoy having that extra back button on these things. It's really not something I normally use, but for some reason as soon as I put these things on my Switch I just wanted to play Doom. And in a game like that, being able to sign the jump button here so you never have to take your thumb off the stick really, really comes in handy. So all the buttons themselves feel fine. There's nothing that really jumped out at me as a bad feeling button. I wouldn't say they're great, but they're definitely they're fine. There's no problem with them at all. One thing I did notice right away though, playing a game like Doom, these thumbsticks are really nice to have in handheld mode. The tiny sticks on the standard Joy-Cons just don't cut it when you're trying to play like a first person shooter or something like that. These make it a million times easier to play something like that in handheld mode. Okay, moving over to the left, nothing out of the ordinary here. You've got the shoulder buttons, another stick. They did put a D-pad on there, and I will say, I do like this D-pad. It's a pretty nice D-pad. I don't have many complaints with this D-pad. How many times am I gonna say D-pad? <laughs> anyway, everything over here is fine. They also did add the assign and turbo button on this side as well. But I feel like it's kind of pointless on this side because you can only program buttons on this side to this button. You can't use any of these over here. So in my opinion, at that point, this one's pretty much useless. I mean, I guess you could assign like the stick push to it or something, or maybe one of these, but I don't really see a reason why you would want to do that. I don't know, if you have a better idea, definitely let me know in the comments. So one of the main questions you might have about these is, are they comfortable? And the answer to that is 100% absolutely yes, they are comfortable. As far as Joy-Cons go, there's nothing you're gonna find out there that is more comfortable than these. You're just not gonna find it. It doesn't exist. There's a whole lot to hold on to here, and for someone with bigger hands, this is gonna be perfect. This is gonna be way easier than trying to hold on to a small standard Joy-Con. They also have a little bit of a texture on the back, and it really does help out a lot when it comes to holding on to these things. It's like a little diamond pattern or something but I'm sure you're probably looking at a close-up of it right now. So yeah, popping these things onto the side of your Switch makes it feel like a completely different system, in a good way, for the most part. I think the overall design, as far as that goes, is pretty good. I played a lot of different types of games on these things just to get an overall feel of what works well on it and what doesn't. I think they work pretty well for just about every game you're going to want to play on the Switch in handheld mode. There are a few you're not going to be able to play, but we'll get into that. But yeah, as long as you're leaving these things connected to your Switch, they're pretty good. But that's where you start running into a little bit of the problems. You cannot disconnect these from the Switch and use them in any way at all. 
as functional as they are used connected directly to the switch, that's pretty much where it stops. One thing I did notice immediately when I take them off, or in your case, if you get them, when you take them out of the box, they feel uh, cheap. They feel cheap. They are extremely lightweight. And the reason for that is because there is absolutely nothing inside here at all. And you know, in most cases for a third party controller, I don't really have an issue with that, but this one I'm not so sure about, but we're gonna come back to that. There is absolutely nothing inside of these. There's no rumble, there's no NFC, there's no batteries, there's no Bluetooth. I also played a little bit of Breath of the Wild with these and found out pretty quickly when I took out my bow and tried to lean my switch forward to aim that there is no motion control in these at all. So essentially what you're buying in this package is the shells, the buttons, and just enough wire to uh, get that signal over to the switch. To some people, none of that stuff is gonna matter at all. To me, a lot of it doesn't matter, except the motion controls, and one other thing, like I said, we'll get to that. But besides a few things here and there, I mean, I do like these. I mean, they really are so comfortable to use, and they're really easy to use, too. You literally just slide them on, and they work, that's it. There's no awkward pairing, nothing like that. They just work. The programmable button is also very simple to use. All you do is hold down the assign button, press the button you want to assign to the back button, and that's it, it's done. And if you wanna take it off, you hold the assign button and then hit the back button again. Super simple, very, very easy to use. And as far as I can tell, once you assign the button back there, the switch remembers that it's assigned to that. So that's definitely nice too, but that's probably more the switch than the controllers, so... So, something I'm sure that you've probably noticed at this point is that these make the switch enormous. It's huge. If you're one of those people who thinks the original switch is already too big to be a daily carry, you definitely want to stay away from these. Well, actually, now that I think about it, maybe you don't, because you're already not carrying it out anyway, so maybe these are good for you. So right off the bat, you're already gonna know this thing's not gonna fit in the case you have for your Switch, probably. I did see a case on Amazon that I will link below that advertises that it has a place in the top that will hold these and hold the Switch unit in the case with a set of Joy-Cons on it as well. But there is also one other solution that I saw online that I think is very lucky and it's pretty awesome too. If you have the Satisfy Gaming Grip for your Switch and you got the Elite Bundle, this thing actually fits. That's not the right case. This is the case. Okay, this thing actually fits in here fairly well. I don't think it's perfect, but it doesn't really put any pressure on the system, which is my main concern when I do something like this. And as you can see, it fits pretty well. It closes fine. There's no pressure on the sticks or anything like that. So if you already have one of these cases, you're pretty much set, you're good to go. Now, I'm not 100% sure, but I also think this thing will fit in Satisfy's Slim case as well. Not 100% sure, but I think it will. Another thing I wanted to bring up about these that bothered me a lot, this probably should not have bothered me as much as it does, but it drives me absolutely insane. These things stick up off the switch in the front. Can you see that there? Yeah, these things stick up off the front of the switch so much. And look at the back, like it's almost flat on the back. Why didn't they just move the rail and make it flat on the front? Am I, am I missing something here? Is there is there some type of design that, uh, that it needs to be like this that I'm missing? I don't know. I think it looks really awkward like this. I would probably love these things a whole lot more if this just sat flush with the system. Like, I don't care what it looks like on the back. I don't have to look at that while I'm playing it. Things like that just drive me nuts. Like. Dude, no way. There are these little tabs on the back that at first I couldn't figure out what they were for, but now, as far as I can tell, they're for two things. One, when you set it down on a table, it keeps it from pressing the programmable buttons on the back. And I'm pretty sure the second reason it's there is just to make it sturdy. Like, holding this just by the controller, I have no problem doing this. I would never do this with a regular Joy-Con. If you've ever done this with a regular Joy-Con, you know what I mean. But this really does give it a ton of support. It makes it feel really sturdy. So even though they look stupid, 
These are a good idea. I do like these, but they do look stupid. They look really dumb. All right, so I've gone over just about everything I can think of. So you're probably wondering, Chris, should I buy the Split Pad Pro or not? And the answer to that question is no. Now I know you're probably saying, you said you didn't mind the missing features. You said you liked it, and that's true. The problem is, these things cost $50. $50? I'm sorry, but for that, for that price, these are missing way too much. If they had motion controls, maybe. That would be a justifiable price if they had motion controls, but they don't have that, they don't have anything. If you could find them on sale for 35, 40 bucks maybe, yeah, sure, why not? Or if, you know, comfort is everything and you just don't care about that other stuff, then yeah, go for it, because you're not gonna get anything more comfortable than these. This is it. Even with a grip, you're still dealing with the buttons directly over top of the stick. At least with this, they're offset like a regular controller is. So as far as comfort goes, this is it. You're not gonna get any better. But with the price tag and all the missing features, I just can't recommend this for most people. That is just way too high of a price tag for, well, nothing. So that's gonna pretty much do it for this one, guys. But before you go, I just wanted to remind you, we are trying to reach 600 subscribers by the end of February, and if we get there, I am going to get a $50 eShop gift card to give away to one of you guys. Once we do get there, I'll make a video and let you guys know how you can enter. Obviously, you're gonna have to be subscribed, so go ahead and do that now. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate all the love and support in the comments. Make sure you leave a like on this video, and we will see you in the next one.